So what about bioavailability? If we're talking about supplementing the endocannabinoid system uh, with exogenous cannabinoids, whether they be synthetics or isolated cannabinoids or in the whole plant form. So, you know, the most common way that people use cannabis is inhalation, and the most common way they inhale is actually, we, Laurie Mitchell will show our data later, but joints are still the most common way, or smoking a bong or a pipe. So there's not that many people using oral administration. So, so you're going to smoke a, a joint. How much THC do you get? Well, it depends, right? And it doesn't just depend on how much is in the cannabis. So this is, you know, here's the fate of THC. They're saying you might lose up to 50% of it in side stream smoke and another maybe 30% in pyrolytic destruction. So there's 80% of it gone right there, which doesn't match up with these numbers. They're saying the mainstream smoke that you draw in may have 20% of what was in the starting material, right? Well, then what about the limitations at, uh, in the lung? How much can actually get across the alveoli? That could depend, right? Uh, how many alveoli do people have? How, how much surfactant do they have? So th these are highly, highly lipophilic compounds, so they just slide right over the alveoli into the bloodstream. So one report said 80% from smoking, but you know, if you take 20% of that 80%, is it, do you get 16%? I, I've always sort of speculated even lower, maybe 10%. So if you take one hit, right, and if you say, uh, so if you, if, you have, if you have a one gram sample and it's 10% uh, THC, you've got 100 grams. 100 milligrams, right? 100 milligrams. And so 10% of that, you might get 10 milligrams in one hit. Does that sound rational? That's an estimate. I mean, people are, are often asking this question, you know. There's one study showing that IV administration of uh, THC, only 1% reached the brain. So we're now talking, how much did it take for a psychoactive effect if 1% of that 10 milligrams reach the brain. So it's, it's really, it's a very potent compound, right? What about other forms for bioavailability? So I've been scouring the literature and it's really hard to find hard numbers, but, and orally it's, uh, it's, there's a wide variety, but I just went with four to 12%. So, uh, obviously less than inhalation, right, because we've got uh, first-pass metabolism, we've got the GI barriers to overcome, we've got differences in absorption in the GI, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Oral mucosal, it's probably a little bit higher, because now we're not talking about having to go across the gut and through the liver. Um, transcutaneous, I couldn't really find an exact number uh, for how, what percent you know, might get through, and, and it's going to be hard because transcutaneous or a topical application may really just act locally and not affect people systemically as much. And I've had people tell me, and I think Jake will probably tell you this later, that topical use, people aren't having psychoactive effects from it, just pain relief. Um, so maybe, I don't know, one of the papers, I guess, I think it, it, they were, there was even a study, but they didn't give a percent. I was like really frustrated. They said how much they measured in the blood, and it was like, but what, what was the starting amount? I was trying to calculate a percent. Um, and, it, you know, I talked about CBD being this slippery little thing, but apparently CBD is a little better at slipping across the skin than THC. Uh, rectally, of course, would also be good. Um, twice that of oral. Sublingual was reported as relatively fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I couldn't find anything about, um, there, there is for the oral mucosal, this comes from Sativex data, so this is reliable, you know. Um, and then again, like I said, IV, I think, I guess this was animals, you know, they only measured 1% of what they injected IV in the brain, so 
I would have thought, you know, the brain is this huge fat reservoir and there might be a whole lot more in the brain. I was, I was actually surprised by that.